Hello guys, lesson 10, talking about meekness. That's a challenge for many of us, including, including me. Anyways, um, we will start today with um, uh, the team for this week. So, if you check my Instagram, you will see in the site Doutor Loma Linda, that um, I had a live session about uh, beans, and uh, but I'm gonna summarize it here before we go, um, and then uh, and then we go to the lesson. So let's go to the um, lecture now. Doctor Bean, that's the topic of the lecture that I have. Uh, I have done this lecture, I would say, for the last 10 years in Loma Linda. That's why some of people start calling me Dr. Bean. Dr. Bean Del Mar. Bean Del Mar. <laughs> just, just kidding. But um, one of the studies that we base these lectures um, is uh, done by Becerra and, and, and collaborators uh, in Spain. That's the pre-med study. Uh, we heard that there is a little bit of trouble with uh, with this study, but uh, still, what we have there is very interesting. You can see here. Let me put this with a with a marker here. You have uh, people that eat beans uh, more frequently, um, uh, like in the highest uh, quartile of consumption compared to the lowest quartile of consumption. They have a decrease in um, um, diabetes 2 um, that is uh, 35 to 41 percent. So we start here with, um, I believe this is um, odds ratio, if I'm not wrong. In any case, uh, and then they, they mention about lentils that uh, also has like uh, 33 to 37, 37 to 33 to 37, uh, the, uh, according to the models. Um, and I like to put that together because uh, many people don't like beans, but lentils they might they might eat. And uh, and and again, so that's uh, that's uh, uh, the best food for for this disease without any doubts. So let's go to the uh, one uh, other things that they um, found in the study was that when they substitute, if they replace um, other foods for beans for other foods, meaning that uh, instead of using in that case here um, eggs or fish or meat or, or bread or white bread or pasta. Um, or rice or baked potatoes, if they use more beans, they have um, even a bigger effect. So um, the ones that are, that are really significant are the ones that are um, not crossing the line. So uh, they are a good substitute for eggs, and then we can say uh, for meat. Uh, meat, it looks like it's getting over the line there. Uh, 1.03, the interval, confidence interval. But uh, uh, very clear about bread, and even whole wheat, whole wheat bread is better to eat uh, beans than whole wheat bread to the prevention of diabetes, because the prevention here, if you, instead of eating whole meal uh, bread, eat, eat more beans, you have 40 uh, Forty-four percent lower risk of diabetes. Isn't that something? And then the, uh, this is whole wheat bread. If you do, um, if you substitute because of white bread, you have forty-seven percent reduction um, on risk. And then if you substitute for rice, you have fifty-two percent reduction in the risk of diabetes type two. And then if you have for baked potato, you have 51%. So isn't that exciting? It's something very, very exciting about beans that uh, we have to, to, to mention all the time. 
So this is Rebello in 2014. It's a little older study. The PREDIMED was done in um, 2018, and then but Rebello did a kind of um, a kind of a summary uh, or a meta-analysis. Um, it was not an experimental one, but um, it was a meta-analysis, and then he found that um, uh, beans can the most consistent result for beans was reducing blood glucose so against diabetes diabetes prevention best food for diabetes beans but uh, he mentioned he found something about uh, like uh, for heart disease as you see here some cholesterol decrease and also across the board for weight management decrease or improve satiety satiety or or, or um, increase satiety so you eat beans you feel full more easily across the board in most of the studies this is a report of um, um, what foods are eaten by um, the different diets uh, or people that follow different diets in the advanced health study and you see that um, the group that eat more beans are the vegans so sometimes we can we tend to say okay they don't eat meat that's why they have all the benefits but maybe it's not because they don't eat meat alone but because they eat a lot of they they eat a lot of uh, of um, good foods i mean they eat more vegetables they eat more fruits as you see here they eat more avocados they eat more whole grains they eat uh, they eat um, uh, not much potatoes um, legumes they are in the, in the front soy foods and, and soy meats they are in the front nuts and seeds no comparison they are all there and then the other foods that of course they are very um, they are very um, low except on the water that also they drink more water so it's not just so the, con the the concept of being vegan is not just don't eat any animal food but eat the right things and do the right behaviors that go together so here we have um, uh, i like to to always apply the canadian food guide because they um, they consider the food the I would say three food groups here uh, without uh, influence of the food industry so they didn't allow the scientists from the food lobbies to be present there and then you can see that um, our our food should be our volume of food should be divided in, in a half and so fruits and vegetables will be the, in this side and they didn't allow for french fries but baked five fries were, were good and then on the right they divide in 25 percent grains whole grains is it the shoes whole grains foods and then the protein here there is no dairy separate uh, uh, group this is water and then uh, dairy should be here as eggs as tofu as chicken and meat and 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 and, and beans and seeds and nuts beans seeds and nuts are concentrate on the source of protein so uh, we can say that um, we were talking about um, uh, foods in the time of recession that's my uh, team for for the Instagram um, live and and that's that's why we we have I, I, I mentioned that three uh, you, you can watch that but I, I mentioned three reasons to it being first because it's simple and cheap and find ev and found everywhere in all countries that I have been around the world. I, I have traveled a lot in uh, South America and uh, Asia, and beans across the board are the cheapest uh, kind of food. Then the second would be health, uh, as we are talking today, the health advantages of eating more beans that are good for diabetes type 2 and have potential for obesity, for uh, heart disease, hypertension, high cholesterol. And then the third one is the versatility of beans, meaning that you can add beans 
you can add beans to to this um, to this salad here. Uh, we have a mix of uh, fruits and vegetables, but you can you see this peas are together with the salad, so you can eat beans with salad. We can eat beans with uh, all of these foods here with pasta, with uh, rice, uh, with quinoa, whatever it is. You can add beans to soups. You can add beans to uh, potato, um, cooking potato, uh, beans with, um, if you like to eat cassava, if you like to eat uh, um, other sources of, uh, of grains, you can always mix beans. I, I, I like the uh, garbanzo beans and garbanzo beans, I can add everything. And also we can make hummus. By the way, we can make hummus not only with garbanzo beans, but with all sorts of beans. This is one case of uh, a patient that came to our full plate diet and he was um, obese and he was um, diabetic, hypertensive. And then um, after two months, uh, he, uh, he, ate, um, he was able to consume 40 grams of uh, fiber per day. And then he stopped using his insulin, his metformin, he was using, I think, 500 milligrams per day. And the, and the metropolol, metropolol, something like that, that's a beta blocker. He was able to have it because his blood pressure dropped it. And the secret was fiber. And the secret of fiber is that he was eating one cup of beans a day. Whatever types of beans, eh? beans, garbanzo, lentils, uh, pinto beans, black beans, red beans, uh, kidney beans, whatever, he was able to eat uh, one cup of day. It's very tough for you, very hard, very difficult to eat 40 grams of protein, uh, of gram of fat. What's going on? Uh, it is very hard to eat 40 grams of fiber per day without eating beans. That's my point. And then um, it's it's something that um, that we pro, uh, prescribe in the full plate diet. And then we are gonna finish with a few pictures of our full plate diet program. This is uh, me giving a lecture there. And uh, one of my students, Dr. Jerry, um well, I forgot his name, um, Tony Jerry. <laughs> uh, I hope he's not watching this. Uh, Tony Jerry, we, we publish a few papers together. And then I was giving a lecture about exercise for the group. We, uh, we were in Drazen Center, that is a gym in Loma Linda. So exercises, uh, opportunities of exercises everywhere. This is one of the sessions. I have two of my students in the back and those two gentlemen were participants. This is our clinical trial that we did with the full plate diet. This individual here on the left, he was an Indian uh, American immigrant and he was, he came to the, to the program with um, A1C of um, 8.5. And when he left, he was uh, 6.7 or something. Was he became a pre, okay, uh, almost pre-diabetic on that. Uh, let's see, 5.7, 6.4. That's pre-diabetic. So he was a little ahead of pre-diabetic, but uh, 8.5 uh, and just eating more beans and more fiber. So those, uh, this was my uh, my student. Um, and then uh, that's it. Um, this is another group on the full plate diet. And um, we have uh, Tony Jerry also. And then we were able to give uh, uh, cans of beans uh, as, as uh, motivators during, the, during those sessions. This is uh, Brenda Coranda, one of my graduates, uh, and she was doing. Uh, she was the main person that did the presentations for the full plate diet on that time. This is a potluck that we do when they graduate. One picture of the participants also. One more group, and we have uh, two 
On the left, we have two of my students, Rayanne Leal, she's doing a dissertation now, and then Mari Bell. Mari Bell finished the uh, Master in Nutrition, and today she works in San Diego as a dietitian. And then we have um, Rayanne Leal and uh, Marek um, Sawyer, uh, that uh, we were uh, launching the Loma Linda Light, that is a weight management support group in the Church of Campus Hill Church. Here they have one more session. And then um, yeah, this was uh, the first time that we launched this program and we plan to have more, uh, more of this program in the, in the communities around. Okay, let's go to the lesson. Um, meekness in the crucibles so let's have a word of prayer to start heavenly father stay with us for us to learn a lesson about meekness and put more meekness in our lives in jesus name we pray amen one of the biggest example of meekness in the bible was by moses he pleaded with god his god and said Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? There was a time that God said, okay, I'm fed up with these people. They are always fighting and, and uh, complaining, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be done with them and I will put you and your descendants in charge. And then uh, Moses said, no, 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 God, no, don't do that. I mean, I, I'm, uh, I, I, I'm also in trouble here, so uh, don't, don't treat them like that. So you are, you are a God that's a powerful God. And then uh, it looks like, uh, I don't know, I don't know the relationship, but uh, Moses must have a, a very intimate relationship uh, to, to, to God. To, to be like that, because God turned around and said, okay, I'm not going to kill them anymore. <laughs> can, we, can we imagine how close he was to the Lord? And we can imagine how far are we? Because he was able to talk to the Lord and turn the Lord thought around. And we barely can sometimes pray enough and uh, when we pray, we are not even trusting that God will answer. And so, and how many of us are always complaining? And I'm talking about myself. Sometimes we forget that um, we have a God and we start complaining about everything. Meekness before our enemies. Love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. This is, I would say, one of the hardest things to do in life. But again, this is one of the uh, most important things uh, for, for Christian. Most important um, characteristic of Christianity is is the fact that we forgive others. People sometimes don't understand that. But uh, two lessons ago, we have a comparison of two people that lost members of their family. One lady that lived, I think someone kidnapped her daughter and she lived the whole life miserable because she wants to revenge, and even if the guy was caught and then put in prison or die, she was not, she was not, she was not good. She could not recover. She didn't overcome that grief. The other was a gentleman who lost one of his son, I think was a drunk driver that ran over his son, and he was, well, I lost my son, but he didn't go to desperation. He he got his um, his thing together with the Lord and was able to forgive that guy. And then he didn't have this 
this sickness inside for years, so he learned that uh, we might need to forgive sometimes. Why should we love those we have hurt us? Jesus shared one basic reason, so that we imitate our Father. God is good with his enemies. enemies uh, he loves them because he sees us candidates for the kingdom of heaven, precious pearls in his treasure. So that's that's the that's our goal. I mean, we 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 might we might convert some people, influence some people for good. When once we are uh, forgiving, when we are praying for people that have hurt us, and not look for revenge, 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 and then uh, revenge belongs to the Lord, and we live like that. meekness before our enemies and then um, i like to to ask a question here what's the difference between meekness and being a doormat some people think that uh, christians are doormats and they uh, they can um, be beaten 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 and and do nothing passively no we are not doormats we if we can do something I mean we we react um, according to God's will but with a purpose it's not because we are passive and just um, okay I'm set up to to be low and I, 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 I have to be bullied no we, we, we can tell them hey I'm forgiving you because of the Lord that forgave me and um, you can even say, well, if I didn't have God, I would, I would go for revenge. But uh, God is saying that we should not go, and so that's a good way to 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 show people why you are forgiving them. And this is very different than being a passive person and say, okay, beat me and beat me and beat me, and and I am depressive. I believe dormants. I mean, if you are depressed, you go into into depression very easy, very easily. Another example of uh, meekness before uh, being a, a, a being meek and not a doormat is what Mother Teresa's uh, uh, example. So she was she was helping people and helping people and helping people and being uh, an example of Jesus Christ. So you can tell that a doormat was not like Jesus. Was Jesus a doormat? I don't think so. And then another reason for us, for our, for our meekness, is what Jesus instituted uh, in the uh, foot um, foot wash during the Lord's Supper. Uh, in John 13:5, he um, he John write like that. John wrote like that. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him yeah you might say uh, one time i was um, i was talking to a friend about that and then he said well this was in the time because uh, jesus want to show them uh, mercy I and mean, meekness and humbleness and it was a lesson because uh, many of the uh, religions today they don't do that even Christian religion they don't do it's just a few our uh, seven day Adventists we follow the foot wash but sometimes they just have one or the priest washing this one foot and that's it in our church we have a session that everybody is invited and then people wash foot of everyone I mean, without any restriction but um, and then um, he was telling me, my friend, that uh, this is not something that we need to do. And then I told him, okay, let's uh, take a look on the, what the Bible says in John 13, 12 to 16 to see what happened. And then um, after Jesus washed their feet and he washed the 12 disciples' feet, um, they, he said, do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, 
you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. So, um, he, he, he is saying that I giving you an example as you, you should do as I have done to you. So, of course, this is a ceremonial thing. But uh, people follow so many ceremonials in the church that are not uh, ordinated by, by the Lord itself. And one that is clear here that uh, was what Jesus was saying, they don't follow. Why? <laughs> because to wash, to wash somebody else's feet is very humble. We don't want to do that. It's, it's troublemaking, it's troubling, and and uh, uh, and then uh, a lot of work. And then what? I'm gonna go down and wash someone as my boss, or, or or my wife, or my or, or my enemy, or or people that I don't like. I mean, I'm not gonna do that. And then the churches stopped doing that, unfortunately. But this is a ceremonial to remind us to be mercy to be a uh, meek. Mix, meekness before injustice. Who, when he was reviled, did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously. So, we are just reviewing again what happened to Jesus Christ, that, um, that uh, when he came, he did in revenge. So people are uh, spitting on him. People are beating on him. People are doing a lot of uh, mockery. And he was there as a lamb, not as a doormat, because he had a message. And then he said, forgive them, because they don't know what they are doing. And Paul uh, mentioned that um, uh, we do not seek for revenge because revenge belongs to the Lord. He is going to do the right justice when it's time for that, sooner or later. Sometimes it's happened right here in this earth, and we uh, sometimes uh, get amazed at how, how the Lord uh, um, produced that revenge here in earth. Well, I think when he saw that... Uh, there is a lesson to be learned for people that are very rebellious against him. He shows some of the punishment here. But sooner or later, revenge is coming. If you do something wrong, you don't need to, uh, you don't need to worry about um, uh, people that have to pay. Ah, you did that, you have to pay. They will pay, I mean, sooner or later. And the most important, have you done something wrong that you might need to pay? Or have you done something wrong that you are already paying? And the source of meekness comes from, from God. God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength and my refuge. So, I, we already discussed that, that um, people that are meek, they are um, taken by being shy, def defenseless cowards. Uh, but now nothing could be furthered from the truth. So our meekness is based on the example that Jesus came to do. He was not here to provide, to provide fights, to provide revenge, to... to raise uh, um, riots and things like that. Sometimes people say, well, aren't you going to a riot? And they say, well, no, uh, because I have to forgive people and not, and not uh, um, fight against them. And that's the last verse for that. If we possess the humility of our master, we shall rise above these lights the rebuffs and the annoyances to which we are daily exposed, and they will cease to cast a gloom over their spirit. The highest evidence of nobility in a Christian is self-control. 
He who, under abuse or cruelty, fails to maintain a calm and trustful spirit, robs God of his right to reveal in him his own perfection of character. Lowliness of heart is the strength that gives victory to the followers of Christ. That's a beautiful message. And uh, again, uh, merciful, I mean meekness, I am confusing merciful with meekness in my brain, but it's meekness, so the top is meekness. Meekness is not a sign of weakness. Meekness is a sign of strength, and meekness, from the perspective of a Christian, has a purpose, a purpose to help other people to understand, to understand what is the true feeling in this world. And then, when we have the humility of our Master, we will not be paranoid. What do you mean paranoid? Well, people live in this world blaming that, oh, this happens because this guy did that to me, and that person does not like me, and that person did not give me the right change, and that person said that I am I'm not a good person, and the other per person look at me and laugh, and the other person is complaining about what I do, what I did. Sometimes we live a life like that, full of a, of a gloomy, uh, and then this life could be improved, could be if we are accepting those crucibles in our lives and leave those things with the Lord. Let's have a word of prayer, and we are going to sing... Um, a song that is, um, Lord, I want to be more uh, meek in my life. Um, from that song, Lord, I want to have Jesus in my heart. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for those sessions, for those lessons. And make us to be more meek. Make us to be more dedicated to you and have um, in our hearts the desire and the motivation to imitate you, to be like Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord, I want